8.30 now as we take you right into our 8.30 high beam. And this morning, we are fortunate to be joined by the service director for the city of Uricksville, Val Everett. Hey, Val, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm not on the road. Today. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm I'm glad we're speaking by telephone today because uh, we kind of anticipated that the travel conditions would not be good. And uh, you had a little peek around and uh, things are really not good, are they, at all? No, they aren't. They're pretty slick out there. And so I would ask the public to take caution when traveling uh, on your morning commute and actually on your way home, too. Uh, we are out there doing the best we can, but putting salt down on um, uh, surfaces where it would just drain into the storm sewer is pretty much a waste of uh, mm -hmm. resources, uh, city resources. So we are attending to the bridges and the hills and trying to just keep up with it. And then once the snow comes, I think, you know, things will settle down maybe hopefully by late evening. Well, let's, yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed for that. This is a gigantic storm. So uh, everybody just... Just be careful and know that uh, the the folks who are out are doing the best they can as quickly as is safe, which is not all that quick because, uh, hey, that's slippery. That's why we're doing this. So anyway, yeah. to get off that and to talk about bridges and streets, you've had some pretty good news about uh, monies coming in for uh, improvements. So can you tell us about that? Yeah. Uh, well, I know that... Uh a while back, we applied for a small cities grant, which is through the ODOT um, program, and we received, uh, actually, I think it was $764,000 through the ODOT grant, and then the remainder of about $148,000 is now going to be covered by an OP, uh, Ohio Public Works Commission grant. I've got to quit using acronyms. So... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so that, that project will be fully funded, considering that the prices don't skyrocket. But, uh, you know, that, that's extremely rare when you get a project that is completely funded. So tell and, us, which, uh, which bridge and which street are we talking oh, about here? Okay, the street would be Trenton Avenue, from the South Water Street Bridge there to Save a Lot. And that project will be curbs, storm sewer replacement, and hopefully some mitigation with some... I and I, we have some, you know, with water and sewer, sometimes mm -hmm. things happen. So we're going to try to address those with the Twin City Water and Sewer Department. So, and it goes all the way to save a lot. And that would be the phase one. And hopefully we'll apply for a phase two and uh, head on up the hill to, um, to to meet the highway there. Yeah. And then the bridge is West 3rd Street Bridge. And it is the, through the ODOT Municipal uh, Bridge Project. It's a program. And that, generally, those programs, the Muni Bridge programs, generally pay 80% grant funding, and then you have to search for 20%. However, this uh, particular program is a 95% funded because our bridge qualified as, you know, a deteriorated hmm. you know it's one of the more the, the high it's just a higher level of deterioration so we are very well we're not fortunate that it's in such bad shape but we are fortunate to be able to get these funds and that's like 1.48 million dollars in funding and uh so uh the project depends on what it comes in you know we'll apply we will have to seek five percent of the funding uh, but instead so, of 15 or 20 that's great Right, and a, a quick note, on the Trenton Avenue project, that will begin uh, work in 2024, and the bridge will be in 2025. Seems like forever, but that's just how these grants work. Mm -hmm. And the bridge is safe uh, in the meantime, right? It is safe. It's just deteriorated, and a lot of it has to do with the design and uh, the drainage. And then so because of the winter treatments, those sorts of things, uh, you know, it's caused... Uh, more harm than good. Yeah. So uh, we do have a, a detour route plan and uh, everything's pretty much set to go into motion. Now we just have to wait for three more years. Of that. <laughs> okay. We can do Dude. that. Hey, we've had uh, some, uh, well, there's another grant too, that you were telling me about a little bit. Uh, what's, what's going on with the grant for the fire department? Well, this is, you know, I know that if anyone tunes into council, people, we've had a couple council members, well, you need to get creative. 
We are creative, and so are the department heads. Um, uh, Judd uh, Edwards, who is our fire chief, he had applied, he applied for grants, you know, probably monthly, and we are very successful. Uh, but this one in particular is uh, was granted through actually Mayor Haney's employer. He works for Berkshire Hathaway Energy Company, and he keeps his ears to the ground. And mm-hmm. when he sees a grant opportunity, he makes sure he passes that news off to, you know, whatever, whichever department it would uh, pertain to. So uh, we received $15,000, and this is for confined space rescue equipment. And so this will be used when they're fighting fires in confined spaces. And, you know, that was a, a, a wonderful surprise yesterday that we received the news. And I want to thank uh, uh, Chief Edwards and his uh, staff because they all work hard and they all contribute to this grant writing. Go oh, ahead, yeah, for sure. Now, there's, yeah. been, there's been some discussion about... Uh, whether or not the police department is understaffed, especially you've had a, an officer, I guess, who's had some medical issues and hasn't been able to uh, be at work for a while. So uh, what's that discussion? Where does that stand? What do you do about that? Well, it's in discussion. <laughs> uh, but uh, where do we stand? Right now we have nine officers. That's including Chief Steele. Uh, and, uh, and he's an active chief. He, he doesn't sit in his office right. and push so, uh, you know, he's out there on these calls also. So we have nine officers. We're down one, you know, due to medical leave. And um, if you do the math, 4,889 calls last year between nine officers, that's over 13 calls per day. Mm. So we are swamped. And, and you know, with, with uh, the drug overdoses, with the domestic violence and and uh, those, those calls, uh, you know, we can't decide when to take those calls. Right. And, and, and they're out on calls, and there are people coming in the door, knocking on our door, saying, I need, to give a, I need to file a report. I mean, we work together. We're a team, but we are definitely undermanned. And, and we, have, we have the uh, American Relief Funding coming in, and we definitely can budget some money in there to probably hire at least one additional officer. But truly, we're down more than just one officer. Uh, If we could get two, we could then uh, dedicate an officer to doing uh, the investigations and a lot of the reports. Because people don't understand it isn't just about going to a door and knocking on the door and, and, you know, having a discussion with someone for a domestic violence or for a drug overdose. There's a lot of paperwork and reports that follow, and this is hours and hours of their time. And uh, so the Mayor Haney and myself and, and uh, Chief Beal are very much in support of hiring an additional officer at this time. Yeah. And one other uh, department that has a lot of work to do is the street department. So oh, yeah. uh, are we staffed there? We are. However, we do plan to hire an additional employee. Uh, then, then we will be equally staffed as what as we were in 2020. We're down one from the 2020 number, but uh, we're waiting to put the budget together. Once we get that budget together, we'll we'll be able to you know give that final number. But um, the street department funding is different because you know we do have the license plate fee and the gasoline tax. And, you know, the storm sewer fee, you know, which that month, those monies can be used in a lot of the um, functions of the street department, including, including their salary. And then, you know, the fire department, we have a couple levies. Now, granted, one is pretty, it's, you know, pretty old. It probably will have to be renewed at some future date. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know getting back to the police, we don't have actual specific funding. So that comes out of our general fund. But uh, the street department, I want to thank everyone because they, I know one employee worked 101 hours in two weeks wow. and uh, they were working around the clock. And although we didn't make everyone happy, uh, I believe that everyone was kept safe and, and, and the roads were cleared as, as best as we could manage with uh, the manpower we have right and the 
going to be tested again today, I suppose, too. So, oh, yeah. Hey, uh, They're prepared. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, next time, we'll have you or the mayor come back on here again in, in a little while so I can ask you about the uh, water park and paving projects and things like that. Does that sound fair? That'd be great. Thank you, Brad. Thank right. you for having me. No, no problem. We uh, like to know what's going on, so uh, it's a good source to find out. Thanks for being okay. And you be safe today, too, all right? I'm going to. I'm going to flip slide away. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe we'll play that for you. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Belle Everett, City Service Director for Yorksville. She's our guest this morning on the 830 High Beam here on the VT Morning Show.